Discord wants you to ignore people. Tariffs are the reason for price hikes, allegedly. And, <laughs> oh, the 50 series have more problems melting this time. Let's get into hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, February 11th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today trying to keep it light and easy not about melting computer parts, but rather about Discord introducing a new feature that makes it so you don't necessarily have to block people that you find grating or annoying in particular Discord servers. Instead, you're gonna be able to just straight up ignore them without them knowing. So that way you don't have any of the pestering, but you get all of the freedom that does come with just being able to not know that they exist on that server. This seems like it could be helpful to a lot of different people because you don't wanna go to the full lengths of blocking, but you don't wanna interact with them either. Let me know if this is helpful for you. Are you looking into ignoring a few people on your Discord servers? But let me tell you what you shouldn't ignore. Today's video is sponsored Falcon Northwest, especially if you're looking at getting a new PC, because Falcon Northwest is a company that's been around for decades because of their dedication to community support, their dedication to customer support, and their dedication to making sure that your PC is not only powerful inside, but expressive of who you are on the outside, whether that's with the custom design that you could put on there, or with making sure that you get components that meet your needs, whether that be a 5090 in their Tiki small form factor PC or 5090 in the frag box or the Dallin. You can have a 5090 in each of them because the founder's edition is so gosh dang small or you can configure it to how you want, including with a Threadripper workstation. Falcon Northwest has a PC to meet your needs, whether that's a mid tower or a travel buddy. And they're your buddy when it comes to support because they have three years warranty on their PCs, but also one year of overnight support, shipping it to them to diagnose something that they can't do remotely and then shipping it back to you overnight to make sure it's right back in your hands. They've been around for three decades and the reason is very clear. They are committed to making sure they're part of the community, making sure that they take care of their customers and they're inseparable from the history of what PC gaming has been over the years. And I'm excited to see where they go with the 50 series and beyond. So you can check out Falcon Northwest at the link in the video description, check out their PCs. You're not gonna be sorry that you did. Don't ignore them, okay? And I don't wanna ignore cool features that motherboard companies have to be putting on their little doodads and bit bobs because Colorful coming out with a slightly unique way of having the PCI Express slot removal situation. We've seen buttons, we've seen the little pull latch, we've seen Asus's uh, GPU damaging Q-Release Slim that scrapes your GPU when you pull it out. Allegedly, they should be fixing that. But now Colorful has a very colorful way of doing it. An on-off switch on, off to pull it out. It's great, simple. It's the simple things that get me excited. I always wanna celebrate when companies do some something slightly different outside of the norm and just say, hey, Good job. I don't know if I'm gonna buy it, but maybe you want to. And maybe you wanna buy a Zotac 50 series GPU. In case you do, their Discord's where you're gonna allegedly wanna do that because they're hosting the ability to buy GPUs from being an active community member over on their Discord server. You can ignore the people that you don't wanna interact with, but they have rules of engagement such as participants must be actively engaging in Zotac's Discord server. They'll ban you from entering again if they find out that you're reselling or scalping it and just trying to make sure that it's not being exploited by bots or scalpers, but rather to actual enthusiasts and fans of the community. Let me know if this is a way that you agree with with trying to get your hands on limited stock. Obviously, back with the 30 series, there were a bunch of different methods that were happening, whether that was Best Buy locking things behind their little paid program, or you had things like Newegg Shuffle, where you had to enter into a little raffle to make sure you could potentially get it. The only time I entered into a Newegg Shuffle, I got the GPU I wanted. It was a 3080 Ti all the way back in the day. But speaking of Newegg and how they do things, they came out and said something that they then retracted, and I have a little bit to add to this story, but Newegg saying that the reason the 5090 and 5080 price hikes have happened from MSI and Asus is because of tariffs. This is something that they said in a tweet with Newegg saying that it went up because of tariffs and adding in a more robust statement saying to add clarity, some graphics card prices have increased due to a number of factors that are unfortunately out of our control. We know the situation has been confusing and frustrating, but it's important to know we are doing everything in our power to bring stability to the situation. Additionally, we're building a new drawing system for hot items, which will provide more details on when available. We're constantly restocking cards, blah, 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 buy from them, whatever. So it's kind of curious that they released this statement and then they retracted it. And there's a bunch of different questions like, hey, GPUs come from Taiwan and Vietnam. Why are they getting tariffs when that hasn't been the tariff country with it being China? And then uh, certain companies are saying, yeah, we actually do get our GPUs from China, like ASRock manufactures there. So they're trying 
trying to move their manufacturing out of there. But additionally, the GPU tariffs appear to only be 10%, but MSI and Asus raised their prices by 14 to 19%. So the pricing even there doesn't add up. I guess there might be additional tariffs on subcomponents that we're not aware of that could potentially be affecting the pricing. But I actually had uh, one of the companies reach out to me after Friday's episode of Hot News where I talked about the price increase and they told me that it was tariffs, but Specifically, they told me I wasn't allowed to disclose that and that I wasn't allowed to disclose who was telling me. It was uh, uh, private information, which number one, it, if this is truly tariffs, why is it private information? Why is Newegg deleting this? Number two, why wouldn't you come out publicly and say that ahead of time with the, with the manufacturer telling me that, yeah, it's just, it happens to be unfortunate timing that it happened right after the GPUs launched. If, if it's unfortunate timing, you have the perfect opportunity as a company to disclose that, to tell people why you're doing it ahead of time instead of shadily and against the consumer doing it right before GPUs come out, like MSI doing it right before they sold their 5090s. They waited until February 6th and then they jacked up the price right before things went on sale. Or with Asus, they release their cards, they send them out for review, reviewers talk about their GPUs and lo and behold, actually one week later, the pricing's undone, the reviews are obsolete and the comparative data is no longer there. You had the opportunity to disclose this publicly. If it is tariffs, it's easy to just say that and the consumer can trust you, but instead, what we have is price raising, and then we have these weird obfuscated dances that are going on where Newegg's tweeting and then deleting it. I'm getting emails with companies telling me I'm not allowed to disclose this information, but I didn't sign an NDA. I didn't sign an embargo. You telling me that an email is classified when I don't agree to that? That's not how anything works. I'm not gonna disclose who sent it, but my business manager is not gonna be happy for me saying this. But at the same time, like if you're pro-consumer, say something to the consumer. Don't say it to a YouTuber who's trying to find out what exactly is going on. You had the perfect opportunity to release a press release. You didn't. And now we all have to wonder, is this you trying to get some profit when it's a 10% tariff and you're taking a 19% price hike? What's the extra 9% for? Is there a legitimate reason? Disclose it. Tell us. Don't just play games behind the scenes and have Newegg delete tweets. <sighs> All right, that brand's over. Could toss it on Therese, so hopefully you can uh, you save money on PC parts so you can buy a 59 or something. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Tuesday, hope you guys had a good weekend, and you know, I got some deals for you. Starting off today, we have a UFD favorite with a Thermaltake Tower 300. This micro ATX case is available in limestone for only $100.97, making it $39.02 off. But then next up, we have this Dell 27-inch 1440p 180 hertz IPS gaming monitor, which you can grab for only $129.99 making it $70 off. And then lastly today we have the LG C4 42 inch 4K OLED Smart TV which you can pick up for $717.59 with the included promo code making it $179.40 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like we're getting a great deal on the Ryzen 9 X3D chips that are supposed to be launching in March. I have been heavily skeptical that these things are gonna be priced reasonably. I still am. Just my internal logic doesn't allow me to believe that the pricing that I'm gonna report is actually real. Details are coming out that the 9950X3D should be $699 and the 9900X3D should be $599. Legitimately, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, especially because the 9800 X3D saw a price increase from the 7800X3D to the tune of about $30 or almost 8-9%. Whereas the Ryzen 9 chips won't have any price bump. Maybe AMD needs to do this so that they can actually move these units. It's been no secret that the 9800X3D is selling the vast majority of models for this new Ryzen 9000 Zen 5 generation. So the X3D chips being priced more competitively could make it happen. I really hope it is this price because that would be the best case scenario. You get the better situation of the new 3D vCache setup. It's not on both CCDs, but it should allegedly be very competitive with the current 9950X when it comes to gaming. That would be fantastic. I wanna see these prices happen. I'm just a little bit skeptical. And I'm very skeptical of Nvidia's response to their entire 50 series launch. It's been a kerfuffle no matter which way you slice it, whether that be Nvidia's announcement where they say the 5070 is equal to a 4090 or now the launch of having very low stock, third party 
cards, jacking up the price and not disclosing why and being real secretive and weird about it. And now it's the black screen issues, the driver hiccups, the BIOS problems, Nvidia is saying that they're investigating it. That's what they're doing. They're investigating it. Well, guess what? They're gonna have a little bit more to investigate because reports came out over the weekend that they're melting. The 5090s are melting, big shocker. However, like we gotta go through the details here because it's not quite as clear. We did talk about it in a couple episodes ago that there was a melted GPU, but that happened to be they were testing 4090s and 5090s and the cable melted after the 4090. This one, however, melted just with the 5090, just using a cable. However, it appears to be a third party extension adapter, making it so that it melted at the GPU side, it melted on the cable side, and it melted at the power supply side. So this is a lot of damage that's happening on the 5090 there, Founders Edition. The Reddit user who's reporting this saying that they had 500 to 520 watts of power draw while playing Battlefield 5, they smelled burning, and then this is the end result of what happened to their computer, melted connectors all over, it's a problem. Additionally, there was a couple more users who did report on this, El Chapuzas Informatico, reporting that somebody had one come off of their power supply, the power supply side of the PCI Express 5.0 cable, burnt not the GPU side, but this appears to be damaged. This appears to be a non-third party issue. The Reddit user having a problem using an extension, an adapter, that makes it a little tricky. This, however, coming straight off the power supply appears to be slightly worse, and Ars Technica reporting that they've had indication that it's happened to more than just two people. It appears to start being a growing number of 5090 users having issues with the cables melting either on the power supply side, the GPU side, or the cable side. And it just appears to be a problem. Somebody from Cybernetics getting asked, hey, which, uh, which adapters or extensions are okay? None of them is the response. Don't use an adapter or an extension, especially when you're pulling 600 watts. Freaking goodness. Nvidia proudly proclaimed that they thought that the 5090 melting issues would potentially be over. It doesn't appear to be that way. It is slightly more complicated than just, oh, they are all melting. We have to investigate, is this the regular 12 volt high power connector or is it the new 12 volt two by six connectors that happen to be melting because that will change how things go moving forward because the new 5090 is on the two by six, not the original. But if you're using an original cable, not a two by six, then that uh, mismatch might be creating the issues here, which Nvidia should disclose. Nvidia should have prepped four people got the power supplies for the 40 series, and then they're just gonna reuse them on the 50 series. So that creates an oopsie doodle, even if you change the connector on the 5090 and the 5080, even if it is the two by six, people are still gonna be rocking the 12 volt high power connector, the original. You're just pushing tons of juice and wattage through very thin cables and melting is uh, apparently a byproduct. And the byproduct of hot news is your comments. So let's see what you had to say in Friday's episode of hot news. We got James Lewis saying, the more I hear about the RTX 50 series, the more convinced I become that I should never buy one of these cards. I agree, you should win one for on our Twitch stream. We got the 5090 giveaway in that uh, height Y70 Taro Milk PC. Looks gorgeous, all right? Don't buy it, win it, thought. Big brain. And then Dimitri saying, in Europe, price for RTX 5090 Astral is from 4,300 to 4,900 euros. Prices are nuts. Because all of this is very greedy, leather jacket. Yeah, that price is nuts. I mean, I, looking at uh, South African prices, looking at Wootwear, it's rough. It's rough at everywhere. It's not just the US, it's uh, everywhere in the world. It happens to be more rough in different locations. Some of the roughness happens to be because of value added tax being included in the price rather than uh, Americans who just forget that tax exists when we talk about pricing. We don't bake it in. We just find out after the fact and we're like, oh man, I actually don't have enough money for this 99 cent Arizona iced tea because it's gonna cost me a dollar six. I only brought a buck, what the heck? And then Quarter Pie saying, it's funny that no one is talking about how much it is to buy a 40 series right now as well. 4080 Supers cost $1,800 on Newegg. I don't feel like I've been ignoring this. I, I feel like I've regularly been discussing the fact that Nvidia's choice with old generations is to discontinue them, which leads to lower stock, which leads to prices being higher. They did this with the 4090. They discontinued it a while ago. The months leading up to the 5090 launch, 4090s were regular between 1800 and 2500 bucks. So they were already very expensive. 4080 Supers, very similar. It's just a limited stock issue. Nvidia choosing to discontinue means that the, the companies that have them 
realize that uh, there's no alternative, so they can charge a little bit more. NVIDIA's not making more money off of this. It's the third party companies that happen to be making more money or the retailers or the third party sellers. And so it, cre it, creates, a, it creates an issue that NVIDIA chooses to discontinue instead of discount like AMD does. And uh, again, just a fundamental difference in NVIDIA's business practice that I disagree with. And then X Soul Driver saying, both Asus and MSI are being deceptive. They both sent out units to reviewers with the old price, then raised prices. MSI held their launch to February 6th and raised their minutes before. Get reviewed as one of the better and less expensive AIBs, ramp price up after the free press boost. I think I, I discussed this a little bit in today's episode. There's underhanded stuff going on that nobody's being forthright about, whether that's political, right? Like maybe the reason my contact told me not to talk about it was because political ramifications. They want to be identified as the person who's complaining about President Trump's tariffs because that could mean that they get targeted and isolated and uh, have more issues later on down the line. Or um, it could be that that's not the full story and they don't want that being reported because it's like it's just one aspect of a whole bunch of stuff going on. But I, I have no explanation besides if it is for legitimately things outside of your control, you can disclose that and customers won't blame you for it as much, right? If you tell us it's tariffs and you can prove it's tariffs, not just that it's 10% tariffs, so you raise your price 19%, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, we can trust you a little bit more if we have legitimate reasoning, but we have no reasoning and the reasoning that's getting put out is getting deleted and then it's all just hush hush what's going on. And so what is the consumer supposed to conclude? You're not being forthright. So what do you want us to draw away from that? The simplest thing is we can't trust you. We can't trust that you have the best interest of your customers in mind because you won't disclose what's going on and you're raising prices. And our official unintelligence saying on EVGA, I don't know why they never at least tried to go Team Red or even hold out with Blue in some way. I feel like they could have partnered in some way to combine Impact or maybe even absorb portions of Evga into Red itself to really try and push more of the enthusiast side. I'm sure Evga could have really shined a lot of insight to the teams from their side of development and experience. Couple reasons, right, that I can uh, immediately conjecture upon. Easiest one, contract. And them being with NVIDIA meant that they signed an exclusivity deal that just meant they had to get out of the game if they didn't want to work with NVIDIA. That's the simplest, right? Like they don't want uh, Jensen coming after them with lawyers. And so it's just easier to pack up your shop and leave. Let's say that that's not true, right? No contract, they had the choice and they looked at AMD and they went, no, that's just as bad because I, there's there's plenty of indication that AMD is very difficult to work with. They're not that much better as a partner for third party companies. They also have their issues. We're seeing that with reports from retailers that they're getting screwed over by AMD. There's plenty of indication that AMD doesn't play nicely with laptop ODMs and OEMs. And so it's not like it's sunshine and roses when you leave Nvidia's green garden. There's actual issues elsewhere. Maybe Intel is just too nascent. Maybe Intel isn't, isn't quite where EVGA needs them to be. Or maybe there are just as many issues with Intel. There could be legitimate reasons or let's say that's not true, right? AMD and uh, Intel are lovely to work with. There's no contract with NVIDIA. We take the CEO as his word, just wants to spend more time with his family. Just wants to get out of the GPU game. He's burnt out. So Jensen took away his passion for doing it. And so just bygones are bygone, which is what I'm going to do with this episode of Hot News. I look forward to the email that I'm going to get from my business manager and my contact uh, for what I said in today's episode. So I'll see you back here for more hot news tomorrow. I'm causing trouble.